I never really had any professional LCR meter in my lab so far. I've only done measurements using this uh, transistor tester, which also features a rudimentary LCR function. But that's about to change because today I'll be taking a closer look at the Handtech TO11 handheld LCR meter. This unit was provided for free by Banggood.com for the purpose of this review, so I encourage you to check out their website for this test instrument and others. The pricing is good and although this product is not available in their EU stock right now, you can get it with EU priority line shipping option which should be better than standard shipping. There are two models for this LCR meter, TO11 and TO22, and as far as I can tell the only advantages the more expensive TO22 model has are the extended test frequency range up to 100 kHz and a second option for test voltages at 0.3 volts. Next, let's mention the naming confusion. There is something going on with the naming of this instrument and uh, I can't quite figure it out. On Hantex website, you can find this LCR meter listed as model number 1832C and 1833C, while on Banggood, you can purchase this labeled as TO11 or TO22. I've emailed Hantech and asked them to clarify this and they have uh, confirmed that the TO11 and TO22 model numbers are ODM specific, which means they have been designed specifically for one of their partners. The instrument is delivered with a uh, really nice hard shell carry case. This feels like top quality, something you would get with a multi thousand dollar instrument. And inside this case, uh, we get the instrument, uh, we get a uh, pair of short alligator clips, a shorting bar, a USB Type-C cable and a generic 5V 2 amps rated charger. This is the instrument itself. It feels pretty solid. On the outside it is uh, surrounded by a rather hard molded rubber which should be removable from the main body but we'll see that when we do the teardown. Overall, it feels like a strong case. There is no rattling, no squeaking noises, but I can notice some marks indicating a lower quality uh, plastic or maybe a lower quality uh, manufacturing process. If you look in the right light, you will see these uh, streaks on the corners of every button on this uh, meter. But on the plus side, the buttons uh, do feel really nice. They are soft rubber. Something interesting about this uh, whole enclosure, it appears Hantec is saving some money here by reusing this on multiple instruments. There are a bunch of multimeters and oscilloscopes combos that use the same enclosure. In fact, if we look at the top section, we have this uh, empty spot where connectors uh, would go for uh, another instrument like a portable oscilloscope. On the side we have a rubber cover for the USB Type-C connection and although it says SD card on here, don't try to put an SD card inside that hole. You will probably lose the card inside the instrument because this does not have a SD card slot. Once again, something to remind us that this case is used on other instruments as well. The USB connector is unusually recessed in there, like you'd have a hard time inserting a standard USB Type-C connector in there. So they have fixed this uh, by supplying you with a uh, rather uh, long USB Type-C plug in the package. As you can see, this is unlike anything uh, you have seen before. On the back we have a Kensington lock which is not something I've seen on handheld meters before. The uh, tilting bell does have a locking position but if you try to press the, the buttons while uh, tilted the meter will slide around. This QR code on the back is a really nice idea but with a poor implementation. So the idea is to scan this code. It's basically a URL which takes you to their website. You select the instrument. And then you have access to video tutorials, user manuals, software downloads and support for that particular instrument. However, the page doesn't offer any of that support material when you get there. By lifting the tilting bale, you will find two screws which secure the battery cover. And normally you would expect to have some feature designed into the case that will allow you to lift that plastic cover. But here we don't have any and I can't imagine how something like this um, 
ended up in the final product. You would think they would try to remove the, the cover themselves to test how the case is working and they would discover that it is impossible to remove. After poking at the battery cover with everything I had available, I managed to get it off and it feels solid with some double blast walls that interlock into the main body and this is possibly the uh, best picture I've seen in a multimeter teardown. I'm greeted by two 18650 batteries inside this meter and they are not soldered, they have used proper battery sockets in here, so these are easily replaceable by, by the user. Well, that is if you get past the battery cover. So let's measure the uh, current consumption of the instrument to figure out the battery life we're going to get with uh, two of these cells. And we're seeing about 1.63 milliamps of current being pulled in standby. Let's turn it on. And we have about 97 milliamps while the meter is active. The batteries used in here are rated for 2600 milliamp hours each and we have two in parallel so that's 5200 milliamp hours total capacity. Our standby current is quite high at 1.6 milliamps but the batteries are pretty big so we get a standby time of 132 days. Our active current is around 96 milliamps so we should get an active time of 54 hours which once again is not bad and there are definitely higher capacity cells out there should you need to upgrade. A big thumbs up goes out to Handtech for offering this uh, uh, possibility to upgrade the batteries. The power button is recessed from the front face to prevent accidental presses and with a quick press the instrument turns on and we are greeted with uh, white text on black background. The brightness on this uh, 2.8 inch TFT is not the best. You would have no problems using this indoor but outdoor with a bit of sunlight I would imagine this screen is uh, not readable anymore. Also it seems like they're wasting quite a bit of uh, uh, real estate uh, with that big blue Handtech logo. You already have the logo seal screen on the upper part of the enclosure. There's no need for a second big logo on the LCD itself. Then the numbers could have been uh, bigger to make them easier to read from a distance, which is always appreciated by most users. There are some shortcut buttons for selecting the measurement function for uh, resistance, capacitance, uh, inductance, and you also have the other uh, expected uh, adjustments like test frequency, range, uh, the speed button which changes the update rate per second. On fast setting you get four readings per second. On the screen you have two measurements available at the same time and they are selectable with uh, these two switches for top and bottom measurements. There is also a selection switch for equivalent uh, series and uh, parallel circuit measurement. And lastly, a uh, set button which uh, offers this uh, really simple settings menu. And here we once again find the uh, model number of 1832C mentioned. And here is the firmer version this unit has. It's fairly recent, January 2020. So Banggood is likely selling the latest version of these. These are your two input terminals and inside the package you get a pair of these uh, short alligator clips. They're not super high quality but uh, they will get you started. There is also the option of four wire sensing through these uh, blade terminals and a fifth guard terminal and you can also use these for direct insertion of uh, components with long leads and as far as I can tell by looking at their website Handtech does not offer any four wire test lead harness uh, compatible with this meter but you can find something similar from BK Precision uh, the model number is TL08C I'll put a link to uh, some of those options in the description. I'm not sure if there'll be a perfect fit with this uh, three terminal connection right here, but it looks like it might work. Or you could make your own four wire test lead sets to fit these terminals. I might do a follow up video on the subject and show you how to build such test leads. Uh, if you're interested, let me know in the comments below. Inside the package you will also get this shorting link which I suppose is uh, useful for uh, calibration by providing a low inductance connection right at the input. 
Let me mention the specs of this unit real quick before we get to testing it. This is generally a 40,000 count meter which can measure inductance, capacitance, resistance. The measurement range is 0 to uh, 2000 henrys, 0 to 20 millifarads and 0 to 20 megaohms. So that means that for its highest range it's only a 20,000 count meter. Regarding the accuracy, it's pretty complicated, it's different for each measurement range and function. You get some tables in the user manual which I will link in the description below for you to check, but the highest accuracy you get for resistance is 0.25% and 0.4% for capacitance and inductance. So it's not a great deal of accuracy, but those are pretty common figures for handheld LCR meters. For example, the BK Precision 879B has similar accuracy figures and costs more than double the cost of the hand tech. Before getting started on some measurements I will run the calibration feature for both short and open circuit on this meter and it will cycle through the different ranges and test frequency. It takes a couple of minutes to do that uh, but I will speed this up on editing. Now for testing the resistance accuracy, I do have some high stability resistors inside this reference box. I built this myself using some really nice uh, V-shape foil resistors. There's a video on this subject, Voldo 183, which I will link on screen right now if you're interested. And uh, these are the uh, values we should be expecting from this. I'm going to be using parallel mode for testing uh, the resistance and as a general rule of thumb you want to use parallel mode for any higher value measurements let's say above 1k. There is an app note detailing how to use series versus parallel mode on an LCR meter which I will link in the description below. It gives a bit more details about these two modes. Let's start by checking the uh, 1k resistor. And it looks like the uh, value measured for 1k is exactly what we expect to see. Let's try the uh, 10k. For 10k we are once again seeing exactly the value we are expecting on the LCR meter. Let's try the 100k. For 100k we are 5 or 6 counts out from the uh, measurement we are expected to see. But that is within the uh, specified accuracy of the LCR meter so no problem there. Now for capacitance measurements I would like to give a warning here make sure the capacitors are fully discharged by shorting them before connection to the LCR meter. A big capacitor may hold quite a lot of energy which will be discharged into the input circuit of the meter when inserted. As you can see this warning is also printed right next to the input terminals. As far as the test frequency you should choose, for small capacitors and inductors you can use a higher frequency, while for high value capacitors and inductors you can use a lower test frequency. And regarding the test mode for low value capacitors you want to use parallel mode, while for higher value capacitors series mode. I don't have any reference capacitors except for uh, this uh, box from AliExpress. Uh, not sure how much we should be trusting this, but it does have measurement uh, test result on the back, so we'll give this a go. We should be seeing a 40 nanofarad capacitor in here, so I'll be using a higher test frequency with parallel mode. So it's not exactly the value we have written in here, but this is not the best setup uh, with these uh, hanging crocodile leads. So it's close enough. As for the inductance measurement, we should be seeing 656.9 microhenries. So we are only one count out, but I should mention I switched to serial measurement and a frequency of 40 kilohertz to get the best results for this measurement. So it's all about having the right settings on the test instrument to be able to get accurate results and it takes a bit of practice and uh, reading of that app note that I mentioned to figure out how to do this properly. Next, let me quickly show you what you can obtain with the PC app and USB connectivity of this meter. The app can be downloaded from Handtech's website but I will also provide the link in the description of the video. It's easy to set up except for the virtual serial port driver which might take some fiddling to get uh, working on Windows 10 but nothing too serious. You open the app, you connect the meter via USB and it should automatically connect. You can see that status change in the bottom status bar and after you press run you start getting measurement. It's like the app is polling the meter for these measurements. If you don't press run you don't get any measurements. 
you can control the different measurement options and ranges and at the end you can save your results in a CSV file. It's a pretty basic app, it works, it's nothing fancy. One thing to note though is that while the meter is connected to the app, the keypad is disabled so you can only control it through the app. This wouldn't be complete without a teardown so we start by removing the rubber holster. Next there are four screws which I need to remove and by the way these are TX10. It looks like there is a warranty void sticker on the case but we don't care about those and we are inside the meter. Immediately I notice a few things. Uh, once again we have that uh, double wall interlock construction which makes the whole assembly rigid and protects against blast damage. Next I can see this is a uh, two board construction. There is a second PCB beneath this one. I don't really like their uh, flex cable management like the white flex cable appears to be too long while the uh, yellow one is rubbing against the outer wall of the enclosure. This uh, I believe could have been handled better. This is our uh, buzzer in SMD package. There is a footprint for a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi module which is unpopulated. There are a couple of uh, pin headers on the top side. One of them J3 I believe is for a serial connection and this uh, PCB has a uh, date code of July 2019, so it's definitely not an old design. The two 18650 batteries are connected in parallel, but the connection at the negative side is done through these two MOSFETs to ensure protection in case of improper polarity, like the user inserting a battery the wrong way around, it prevents the two cells shorting. And there are two more TX9 screws which I need to remove for further access. On the other side of this main PCB is where all the magic happens. We have an STM32F103 which is the brains of this meter and there's no surprise here as everyone is using these in the past few years. Next let's look at the analog section. We have six analog switches SG3002. A bunch of op amps, they're different specs from different manufacturers. This is a 4051 analog MUX and so far I don't see any external ADC on this board so could they be using the internal 12-bit ADC inside the STM32? I don't know, but you would think they would need more bits for precision. On the input section we have a bunch of diodes, some input resistors in a 1206 package and a resettable fuse. I see no other protection devices, no MOVs for example, and I'm not sure how needed those are. This is after all designed to measure passive components, resistors, capacitors, inductors. Generally the soldering is very good and clean, no flux residue with the exception of the input blade terminals which might have been hand soldered last and there is a bit of flux residue on those. Moving on to the keypad PCB, on one side we have all the keypad contacts while on the other side we have some power management stuff. Starting from the USB Type-C connector, next to it we have the HM4002 which is like a power path management IC with integrated battery charging and DC to DC switching regulator. This chip is capable of switching the DC input to the battery charging path as well as the DC to DC switching regulator and can alternate between these depending on the power needs of the system. Right here we have probably another small linear regulator for generating an extra rail needed in the system and that's about all we have on this PCB. Now for the final verdict of this meter, should you consider buying this? Yes, if you need a dedicated LCR meter with decent accuracy and you are on a budget. In some aspects they designed this super nice, like the fact that they put user serviceable 18650 batteries to power this meter, but in other areas they did very poorly, like the badly designed case around the batteries which is super hard to remove or the USB port which is buried deep inside the case or the fact that the LCD does not have enough brightness. On the plus side the meter is nicely assembled, there are no bodges inside, there is, there is good quality soldering, the PC connectivity app works, the mechanical construction of the case is good, so it's definitely worth its price tag. I would also love to hear your opinion in the comments below, let me know what you think about Handtech and their products and if you'd like to see me build a set of uh, Kelvin test leads for this meter. 
Don't forget you can support this channel on Patreon, you can put in as little as $1 per month and that adds up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.